It's time once again for that business show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNZ, where business becomes show business. Now, live in studio and promoting the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the American economy, your host, Jamie Maloney. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in this early Tuesday morning to that business show with Jamie Maloney, where business become show business again weekday mornings at 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ, a show with a positive message each morning as I talk to different business owners, entrepreneurs, political and community leaders. As always, I extend an invite over to my website, tampabayradio.com. All shows of this uh, show available on demand via the show info tab over there. Also, we do stream all these shows live in studio. So if you click the uh, watch live stream button on the homepage, you can see the uh, live stream here in studio as well. Also, uh, please connect with me on all the different social networking sites. Uh, you'll find me over there on Facebook under uh, That Business Show, facebook.com forward slash That Business Show. Also, uh, Twitter under the name Jamie underscore Maloney. Well, I hope everybody's uh, getting back to uh, work today. It was quite the uh, rainy day, but it looks like we got a, uh, a dry forecast uh, ahead for us over the next uh, few days. I know getting out of here yesterday was a little bit of a burden. I uh, work over in the Hyde Park uh, area, and I'm on Gandhi uh, right now, and uh, it was uh, quite the mess getting out of here yesterday. Uh, yesterday. Uh, the uh, guy comes on after me, Dr. Garko, wasn't even able to make it into the studio yesterday to do his show live, uh, but he'll be back in uh, today, I'm sure, at uh, 9 o'clock after the show to do his uh, Let's Talk Nutrition show. Uh, but again, a dry uh, forecast uh, and getting into the area today. I didn't see any uh, issues on the streets in the South Tampa area, but not to say there still aren't floods and, and water out there. So be careful when you're driving around. Don't drive through any standing water, please, and uh, you just use some common sense when you're driving in and around the area. Uh, as always, great show planned for you today on the second half of the show. We'll be talking with Leslie Hobbs and Claude Reginald Jean about their uh, humanitarian efforts to help the people in Haiti through their uh, nonprofit organization. So uh, an earthquake uh, hit the uh, country a few years back, and that country is still uh, recovering. So we'll be talking with them about their efforts uh, that they've been uh, putting forth uh, since 2011 through their nonprofit on the uh, second half of the show. But up first, Eileen A. O'Hara and Julie Stevens are the co-owners of Brimstone Original Specialty Foods based in Largo. Since 2002, they have developed recipes for assorted flavors of all-natural jellies, four of which are pepper jellies currently available in specialty food stores, online, and one of which is available in Costco warehouses. Eileen and Julie, welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you very much. Eileen, let's uh, start with you. You've got a great story of how this business came together, so I want to hear it. Well, it actually didn't start out to be a business. Um, in O2 of um, December of 2002, I made my husband, Rick, 12 jars of habanero pepper jelly just as a Christmas gift. And he shared it with his pepperhead friends. And the next thing I know, I am making habanero pepper jelly as fast as these guys would bring me the ingredients. We did our first show in June of 03. And we were absolutely amazed at the reaction to this product. And I thought, well, that was fun. Let's go find some more venues. And um, so I dragged my daughter and her sister and the whole family basically uh, to some of these events. Um, a lot of people couldn't handle the heat of that habanero. Now, where were you getting these habaneros, though, in the beginning, right? Oh. You said you had a... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you said you uh, kind of had a pill for those things, right? Yeah, yeah. What, yeah the it? whole thing started with a robbery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah don't, don't skirt over that now. No, okay. you got to keep it real here on the yeah, show. Yeah, so, I come, did. Let, I went down to the neighbors and stole habanero peppers off his bush and <laughs> came home and made those 12 jars of, of pepper Are there a lot jelly. of jellies out there that are made with habanero peppers? I don't, um, I don't think of peppers and jelly going hand hand in hand well there's some out there that claim to have habanero ours has a lot of habanero so if you're looking for heat let me tell you we don't disappoint yeah you brought in some samples uh this morning one of which was a, a fairly hot uh, uh, uh jelly there and uh so uh, you know what are some of the different brands or first of all what's the one that uh, people will know in costco the one in Costco is the jalapeno. It's our best seller. And it comes in a larger jar, as you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful jelly. Most everyone can mm -hmm. handle the jalapeno. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful to use as a snack, like we do with cream cheese and crackers. And 
we also cook with it. And our website has recipes. You can use it. One thing you should never do with these products is refrigerate them. Even yeah, so after you, you're opening. telling me that. Yeah, you brought me in some samples. Why don't you refrigerate the jellies? It will ruin them. They'll crystallize like honey. And once they're open, they can last up to four years in your cabinet because the vinegar in them acts as a natural preservative. Boaters and RVers love them. They don't have to waste space in those little refrigerators. Okay, so you use vinegar as a preservative yes. in the jelly, and so that's uh, that's unique then, right? Or is well, it- for our, I guess it, you know, a lot of things don't need to be refrigerated, like mustard has vinegar in it. You mm-hmm. know, you don't have to refrigerate it. So um, I always have fun with this about doomsday preppers love them. You know, you can stockpile <laughs> these right? products. Let's actually. go over to uh, your daughter, Julie, here. Uh, Julie, how did you get involved uh, with the uh, family business? Well, I was dragged into it. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually working full time and um, trying to decide if I wanted to stay at work. I was pregnant, about to have a baby, and my mom was all excited about what she referred to as pepper jelly, which I had never heard of before. So uh, she said, we're going to this pepper fest. We're going to work the show. And it worked out great. We sold a ton. And I was I was on on board. So I quit my job and I was able to stay home. So now you're able to stay home with the family, make the uh the jellies. What is your role in uh, the company specifically? I'm the one that works on the website. Um, I'll do the invoicing. I'm also at the Clearwater Costco every week. Thursday through Sunday. Yeah. You can you can sample our jalapeno with me. Yeah, so, well, yeah you've already <laughs> given me some great samples here in the yeah. morning, so I can definitely vouch for yeah, them. Yeah, so and, I'm always there. And people can uh, learn more about these uh, jellies at brimstoneoriginals.com. That is their mm-hmm. website, mm-hmm. brimstoneoriginals.com. You were just telling me a moment ago, uh, you just got a, a great phone call last week. I mean, the company's growing even more. Tell the audience yes. what's Yes, um, one of the Costco members met me there, had the samples, logged onto our website, wondered why aren't they in other places? He's a food broker. Mm-hmm. And um, he ended up meeting with us and he's got huge connections. So we're gonna see where that leads and we're, we're very excited. We're, we're always interested in hooking up with brokers. Um, we're looking for funding for marketing. We, you know, once we get into, into these stores, we need to demo the product. When you're, right. when you're in the food business, the best way to market it is for people to eat it, sample it. Right. So we want to be able to put people out there across the nation and and But you're talking with Publix though right now, right? Right. So, and, and that's with a, a different broker we've we've connected with who is putting us in seventy Publix locations throughout Florida, Georgia, um, Tennessee and South Carolina. And that will be posted on our website, brimstoneoriginals.com because we don't know the exact locations yet, but there will be 70 public locations. We'll and you're out there looking for investors and we people are. to get involved in the company. Right, so, right. And I always tell my listeners, people out there that are, you know, tuning in to the show for the first time, <clears throat> I have a lot of just uh, up and coming companies on this show. And so it's an excellent resource for people that are looking to yeah. help grow uh, companies out there. Any investors That's out right. there? That's I mean, right. there's just so many people in the Tampa Bay region, such a great entrepreneurial spirit going on around the area. And this show is, uh, you know, just a great source for all the different people and what yeah. They're yes. doing now. Um, where else can your uh, jellies be found? I mean, you got them in the Costco warehouses. You your can website. find all of our flavors in the eleven and a half ounce jars in Mazzaro's in St. Pete, Savory Spice in St. Pete. We're at um, Hammerhead Hardware in Largo, off of West Bay. It, it, we have a store locator page on our website. So if you log on to our website again, brimstoneoriginals.com, you'll find all of those stores listed. But quite a few in St. Pete. We want to branch out into Oldsmar, Palm Harbor. We're in a, there's a new account in uh, Tampa called, uh, I think it's Nutrition Smart, I believe. I think that's the name of it. Yes. Brand new account. So we're in there. But again, this is all on our website. So. All right. And you have some events uh, coming up. Uh, Let's talk to uh, the audience about what's coming up with uh, your product line and some events. Well, we are a regular vendor in St. Petersburg at the Saturday morning market, which will begin the first Saturday in October, goes through the last Saturday of May. Um, We will be registering for the Curry Festival coming up in September. Also, the I Like It Hot Show. We like to do all of the local pepper festivals. It's a, it's a natural, of course, you mm-hmm. know, pretty, pretty natural for us to be there. We've been at that show for a number of years and always do really well. Uh, last year and probably again this year, we'll be at the Junior League Holiday Gift Mart in Tampa. And um, just whatever special events 
come up. We, we get invited to a lot of events. We can't get to all of them. But if it works, we're there. So all these jellies that you make, they are all pepper-based. Do you have other mm-hmm. uh, product lines that are not uh, uh, based around the pepper? But as, uh, tell me a little bit about a little bit more about the product specifically. Okay. Right now, our line, uh, we have four flavors of pepper jelly. Now, we have two new flavors coming out. We've partnered with a blueberry farmer in Plant City, Bluesberry Farm. <laughs> and they requested two flavors of pepper jelly using their blueberries. So we will be launching those products this fall, a uh, blueberry jalapeno and a blueberry habanero. I see you got the uh, gluten-free tag on uh, the jellies there. That's a big selling point these days with food. I mean, uh, how is that made? Or do you have to do anything special to remove the gluten? I'm not even certain what gluten is. Well, gluten is a wheat-based item, and there's no wheat in in these products. Um, they're, they're just, the, if you look at the ingredients, there's nothing artificial in them. They are all natural and, and, and just fun to use. The flavors are so concentrated that even we can't claim, you know, diabetics, you know, can, but, but diabetics actually like them mm-hmm. because they can use just a little bit and get a really powerful and people, flavor. People cook with these. They don't realize, you know, you can pour these in a crock pot with meatballs. You can glaze chicken or fish. They're not just something that you put on toast. Yeah, I see um, on your site you got you some recipes too. Right. I mean, what type of what type of d- meals would you make with uh, jellies? Um, I personally love it. I'll melt down uh, butter, the jelly, and some sea salt. Pour it over your salmon or your cod and bake with it. We like to grill with it. All you do is warm it. It's that easy. Warm it in a dish. Thirty seconds in the microwave. Pour it over your food and. Bake it or grill it. It's and these jellies easy. are uh, award-winning, too. I see you got a list of awards. Share with the audience uh, mm-hmm. some of the awards uh, that uh, this uh, product or your products have made. The People's Choice Awards, we received that. Uh, we were the finalists in the Gallo Family Vineyard Gold Medals um, Awards awards in 07. Um, Emerging Entrepreneur Award. Um, my mom, Eileen, 2010 finalist in the Tampa Bay uh, Business Journal, Woman of the Year. Uh, the I Like It Hot Show, we we won three awards there, so we're accumulating quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> My living room is filling up. <laughs> <laughs> well, great story. i got to take a quick break, but uh, coming back from the break, I'm going to talk a little bit more with Eileen O'Hara and Julie Stevens. They are the co-owners uh, and co-founders of Brimstone Originals, and you can learn more about them at brimstoneoriginals.com. And you're currently listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Hey there, it's Lynn Wise, the founder of Wise Business Advisors and Contractor Business Alliance. I am a certified value builder advisor, and I help business owners build a company that will allow them to have the business that they dreamed of when they started. Why did you go into business for yourself? I'm sure it was not to work 100 hours a week with no work-life balance and no financial freedom. What am I talking about? I'm talking about building a business that provides value to you and your family now and in the future. You can learn about the eight essential areas of a business that you must build to have a business that can be an asset for your future. Go to wisebusinessadvisors.com and take the Value Builder score. It is free and will deliver your score immediately on how you are doing on building a valuable business for you and your family. Or call me at 772-834-8513 learn more about the value builder system are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project then contact jaeger and company incorporated a family-owned state certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the angie's list super service award for the last eight years in multiple categories jaeger and company comes to you with their shop at home flooring sales service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the bay kitchen and bath design featuring american-made well-born cabinets and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage want you to experience the thrill of one-day underwriting and the comfort in knowing your loans will be clear to close in record time. While a competition looks to a lost closing date, Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage focus on their 12-day clear to close. They do this by utilizing their world-class operations staff to underwrite your loan within six hours, process your loan in 12 days, and have your loan closed in time. Underwritten in six hours, cleared to close in 12 days. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. 
Get a free, no obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. Have you considered a reverse mortgage as part of your retirement financial plan? For homeowners age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage from Access Reverse Mortgage is a safe economical way to turn your home's equity into cash or monthly income. Access Reverse Mortgage is a family-owned company based right here in the Tampa Bay area for the past 10 years. They are A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and Florida's leading reverse mortgage provider. Call 727 347-0305 347-0305 or go to accessreverse.com to start your research today. NMLS number 4566. That's 727 727- Three four seven zero three zero five. Are you looking for a local real estate firm that knows the market and has your interests in mind? Then contact Jim McPeak at McPeak Real Estate Firm, a family-owned business whose agents have over 60-plus years of experience in the Tampa Bay market. Many of the agents are military veterans that know the VA process for buying a home and are proud to help our military members in any way they can. From residential to commercial real estate, McPeak Real Estate Firm is here to help. Contact Jim at 813-495-3875 and learn more at mcpeakteam.com. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. Slow traffic on the interstates, northbound 275 from the Howard Franklin up through Memorial. Also southbound Veterans Expressway, slow from Gun Highway to Waters. Had a crash on Starkey Boulevard in Pasco County. That is just north of State Road 54. Both directions blocked there. Right lane blocked on westbound Countryside Boulevard at US 19 due to an overturned vehicle. And a crash along eastbound Hillsborough Avenue near Lois being cleared. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abraham Sun and Utica Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the Foundation for a Better Life. She didn't just visit the sick and poor. She moved in with them because they needed help. Mother Teresa couldn't do it all, but she gave her all. Compassion. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Flood watch still in effect for the coastal counties. A 30% rain chance today, mostly cloudy, high 88. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 77. Tomorrow, sunshine, high 91. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for staying tuned in this early Tuesday morning to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business become show business again you'll find this show on here weekday mornings at 8 a.m here on 1250 whnz and you can learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com also over on the site you'll notice that i sell real estate so you can peruse all the uh, local real estate listings and see my properties prior to hitting the market via the pre-list properties tab on the home page and also if you're a seller considering uh selling the home in the uh, tampa bay region do offer a free home valuation to all my listeners just click on the sell your home link on the home page and put in some information on your home and we'll get you over a free home valuation typically get those out within 24 to 48 business hours and we need some inventory out there so uh, now is a good time to put your home on the market a lot of properties are getting multiple offers and so we need some uh, inventory and you'd be surprised uh, what your home uh, might be worth so uh, take a moment to uh, check out tampabayradio.com click on the uh, sell your home link up on the uh, home page there and uh, we'll shoot you over a uh, free home valuation Currently talk with Eileen O'Hara and Julie Stevens. They are the co-founders of Brimstone Originals. Learn more about them at brimstoneoriginals.com. And these are award-winning pepper-based jellies that we've been talking about in the first segment. And, uh, Julie, you got a promotion that you're running right now. Talk to the audience about what you got going on. Correct. Uh, normally, these jellies sell for $7 a jar right now. Again, if you if you log on to brimstoneoriginals.com, our promo is $5 a jar. You can order as many as you'd like only five dollars to ship so this the it expires at midnight tonight so take advantage of it it's in the continental u.s only uh five dollars a jar five dollars to ship and then it goes back up to seven tell me how the uh product comes together i mean you make are you making these and packaging them and shipping them all yourself Um, in the beginning we did but then as we um were approached by store owners we realized we could not handle that anymore so it took a while for us to search for um, co-packers who would manufacture jelly and not only jelly, but ha- habanero because mm-hmm. it is hard to work with. You burn your hands, you burn your eyes. It- it's hard. So we did team up with Braswell's and they have been co-packing for us for years. You know, we, we signed a non-disclosure agreement. There are recipes. 
Um, and that's kind of how it So happened. are they making the product? Or, mm-hmm. Okay, so how are you? Are you out there doing the marketing now? And that they're handling- frees up our time to do the marketing, the R&D. Um, you know, my mom does more of the R&D. She's more of the cook. Mm-hmm. So she'll play around with the different recipes, and which is how we've come up with our new, two new flavors. Now, Eileen, take me back to the beginning. And you mentioned the story in the uh, first segment. Uh, you know, you, you stole some peppers and you made, you made the jelly and everything. <laughs> but how did you know when you had something of marketability? What, what was that? I always like to ask, uh, you know, successful people. When was that moment that you realized, wait, I might be able to make some money on this? Well, I guess the first reaction from my husband was, what the heck was that when he first <laughs> tasted it? And and like I said, he took some of the jars to, he plays racquetball. He's an avid racquetball player. And so he took some of the jars um, to some of his friends. <clears throat> and then they had the same reaction. What in the world was that? And then they wanted more of it. And one of the guys suggested we do a show, a pepper show, at Beckett Lake Nursery in Clearwater. They used to uh, host a uh, pepper festival. And and there is that festival is still out there, but it's just not at that location. But anyway, we took that one product to that show. And it was a two-day show in a monsoon, I might <laughs> add, wind-driven rain. And But uh, we learned something. Pepperheads are relentless. <laughs> it, they, they came out in droves in that weather. And we had something that no one else had. It was just just a fortunate um, opportunity, and we just could not believe the reaction to that one product. But we also had several people who couldn't handle that heat, so we <laughs> spent we spent the next few months cleaning the membranes and seeds out of habaneros to make a milder version Mm -hmm. didn't realize all we had to do was go get some jalapenos you know (laughs) so and the jalapeno became our 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 best seller followed closely by our cranberry jalapeno came out with that during the holidays and it just does so well and you've done uh, HSN shows, five HSN shows, or do we see you on HSN anymore? I mean, what? How are you getting the product to market these days? Now uh, you're getting Costco's, and uh, <clears throat> but how are you helping to you know grow this product though? How to grow the product is always a challenge, and mar- it's all about the marketing. Um, Julie's wonderful with social media. She's always putting tweets out there and Facebook posts, and I'm on LinkedIn. I mean, there's you just have to take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, we have an advisor who who is always watching our our SEO. You know, mm-hmm. I learn these terms: search engine optimization, and um, it's 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 working. It's beginning to actually work. Um, in our area, we have so many tourists, and they purchase the product either at Costco or at the market or at some of the local stores. They take it home. Canadians are saying, when are you coming to Canada? So we're beginning to talk to exporters. So it's it has taken on a life of its own. And you mentioned really. in the uh, first segment, we'll put that out there again. I mean, you're looking for investment into this product. So any of the uh, financial guys out there, financial men or women out there, you know, looking to get involved <clears> in <throat> a ground floor, I wouldn't necessarily call this a ground floor business. You're definitely uh, up and running, but, you know, a local business with a lot of potential. <clears throat> I mean, you're in two Costco warehouses already. Right. Uh, you're right. looking to be put in 70 public stores here yeah. soon, correct? Correct. And, and what what people don't realize is that we are a small business and we have to produce the product first and pay for it and and we wait for those checks to come in so you know it's it's a little scary but but we do it and and we're growing but yeah it it does take money up front and and we've done pretty well yeah, we're I would excited. say so. I yeah, mean, it's a, not just another great business, and you're based up in Largo. Got about a minute left, but tell me, you know, I mean, and help inspire others. What's it like to be an entrepreneur and work together in the family? It, at first, it's very scary, but if you you can't let it get to your head, you take everything day by day. A lot of this, we just kind of each step led to the next step. You, you don't ever go in knowing exactly what you're going to do. You, you do create your business plan, and you and you try to follow that, but. One thing leads to another, and and don't grow too quickly. 
you know, you have to crawl before you walk. So that, yeah. that's what we've done. Well, Julie and Eileen, I both appreciate you, I appreciate you both coming in and talking to me about your business and great job on the show today. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Absolutely. And again, those are the uh, co-founders of Brimstone Originals. Learn more about them over at brimstoneoriginals.com. Stay tuned. Coming back from the break, we'll be talking with uh, Leslie Hobbs and uh, Claude Reginald Jean about the uh, uh, future of Haiti organization. And you're currently listening to that business show with Jamie Mooney, where business becomes show business. Hi, welcome to Yeager's. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Yeager's, our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tiles, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area. entire purchase is protected by my make it right guarantee call for your trust Dale deal from the bright house networks traffic center southbound 66th street just south of alberton crash there before 126 blocking the lane also on pasco county starkey boulevard both directions blocked just north of 54 as well as some lanes blockage on state road 54 near seven springs over in tampa northbound 275 still slow off the howard franklin bridge and southbound 275 See traffic problems called the injury firm of Abrahamson and Urich. Hillsborough traffic tip line 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the American Association for Cancer Research. The American Association for Cancer Research is the world's first and largest organization dedicated to finding cures through research. Please support cancer research by donating today at www.aacrfoundation.org. Winds Weather Center forecast. Flood watch for the coastal counties has been extended to run through this evening. That could be revised and extended further again, depending on the rain today. About a 50% chance we'll see partly sunny skies. Upper 80s near 90 for the high. Lows mid to upper 70s. Impact Radio 1250 winds WHNZ. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back, and thanks for staying tuned in. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Again, weekday mornings at 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ. And learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com. Time to bring on my next guests for the show. Leslie Hobbs has been selling real estate in the Bay Area since 2004. And in September of 2010, she met Claude Reginald Jean when he moved here from Haiti after the earthquake. Together, Leslie and Claude formed a nonprofit organization to help feed and support the children in Haiti and other humanitarian activities in January of 2011. So Leslie and you go by Reggie though, so we'll refer to you as Reggie the rest of the uh, show. But uh, Reggie, uh, both of y'all, welcome to the show today. Thank you. Very Thank you much. very much. So uh, Reggie, let's start with you. I mean, I remember hearing about this, you know, some years ago, the big earthquake in Haiti, and just like any news story, uh, you know, it was the story of the week for a few weeks, and then something else comes along, and you kind of forget about it. But by no means is Haiti out of the water, right? So rehash what's happened over there. It was a regular day. Uh, in the evening, I was standing outside, and all of a sudden, I found myself like standing on the ocean. All the ground was going up and down, left and right, and uh, it was just one minute, and uh, it appeared to me like uh, eternity. Mm -hmm. 
And after that, it was... And when did the uh, the earthquake? It's been about five years or something since it's the major five event? five years, uh, exactly. And it really devastated the island, right? To- I mean, it was, like it was near... Devastation. Yeah, it was like near total devastation over there. Yes. And uh, I mean, but, and by no means is Haiti in any great shape today uh, after that earthquake. I mean, tell me what's the environment like in Haiti now as a result of that earthquake? If you go to Haiti now, mainly in the Port-au-Prince area, the downtown city, you would think the earthquake happened like uh, two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing big has been done. Even the wobbles are still on the floor. And uh, it, it is very expensive to clean up. Some people just abandon their site because they cannot afford to pay uh, the companies. To and you were and living in Haiti on the day. I mean, you actually experienced the earthquake thing, absolutely, correct? Absolutely. What was the magnitude of the quake? Uh, 7.4. Wow. I've never been in any earthquake. I've felt some rumbling, but I can imagine the, the fear that must have instilled in you. And uh, so how did you get out of Haiti into America now? Or, and how, how, does that, how did you get over here? And how did this organization come together, support the, uh, the, the future of Haiti? I was uh, out helping people, and uh, I met a group who came from the United States, particularly from Clearwater, and uh, I worked with them, helping people, getting people out of wobbles. Miracles happened. We found people five, six, seven days under the wobble, still alive, living on, uh, you know. Yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah, whatever. Whatever they could yeah, find next yeah, to them. And... Uh, uh, this could be a good advertisement for Coca-Cola. Somebody in the in a supermarket who crashed was next to the fridge, and could have some Coca-Cola, mm-hmm. you know, under the wobble and survive nine days. And uh, that group helped me uh, with my family because you couldn't find anything to buy to feed your family, so they helped me come to the United States. I was on a plane that came with help, support for Haiti, Mm -hmm. and I could get on the plane to when they returned empty, so I could get on the plane and get through the immigration process in Miami, and uh, that's how I came here. Let me uh, bring Leslie into the conversation. Leslie, um, you and I both sell real estate in the area. We've done some deals together in the past, (laughs) Uh, but uh, you, uh, like me, like to help other people, and so you got involved in the uh, Future of Haiti organization. How did it come together, though, for you? Well, I met Reggie because his children uh, were at the school of my children, and uh, actually I recruited him for a home-based business that I do, another thing that I do, Uh and uh, then I started learning about Haiti. I knew nothing. You know, I mean, I vaguely kind of knew where it was, but I didn't even know how close it was. It's only a two-hour flight from Fort Lauderdale, Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he's been doing humanitarian activities since 1980. He was a college teacher for 23 years, and so everything I learned about Haiti, I learned from a very educated person that loves his country versus what most people get, you know. But when I found out he had this orphanage and at his home, he had 137 children and all the volunteers that had come after the earthquake left in July and nobody was helping him. I'm like, you Yeah, you kidding? mentioned that to me when we were talking before the show. I mean, you were supporting 137 children after the earthquake. Yes. And uh, what happened to their parents? Did they just, some of them perished and then they were just orphaned? How did that come together? Some of them became orphaned. Some of them, uh, the parents went to work and died at their place where they were working or they been uh you know in hospital for one month and the kids were there home with nobody to support them so families or neighbors brought them to us and uh, as a matter of fact when those parents came out of the hospital some of them came and claimed their children Mm -hmm. and uh some of them left them with us and they were happy that we were helping so the children that we have, they are not 100% uh, orphans. Like we can say 30% of our children are uh, orphans. Some of them are from very poor families mm-hmm. who couldn't uh, provide for them anything educational. Food. So, so Leslie, you heard his story, and that inspired you then to uh, f- – who found – you founded the organization together, correct? Yes. Okay, so his uh, his story inspired you to do that. And uh, the Future of Haiti organization. So tell me more about the organization now and how it works, you know, to assist the people in Haiti. Okay, well, um, we we actually formed it in, in January 2011. We got our 501c3 status from the IRS in May of 2011. And just about all the money that we take in goes directly to Haiti. 
Um, we have 35 staff down there. We've got about 20 teachers and then, you know, nannies and cooks and, you know, a total of about 35 staff. So all the money that we take goes down to either feed the children, clothe the children, send barrels to Haiti. We have these 75-gallon barrels. I have two in my carport right now ready to mm -hmm. go. The, the barrels are 50 bucks and they cost $100 to ship them, you know. And so we're just totally operating on donations. And um, also we have a sponsored child program. So half of our children are sponsored right now. It's $30 a month to sponsor a child's food and $30 a month to, to sponsor their education, which pays for like their books and school clothes and stuff like that. And so $60 a month will fully sponsor a child. We have, you know, 50 children sponsored right now. One, ch one guy in Connecticut's actually sponsoring six children. You know, this became his passion after he lost his wife of 35 years. And he was like, you know, kind of down and out. And then we met on Facebook and mm -hmm. <laughs> he started with one. And then I was down there and I was with his daughter, Dara Lee, you know. And uh, it was, we had a birthday party for her. And then he said, I want another little girl. And then it just kind of grew from there, you know. So that's about half of our budget is our sponsor a child program. And then just donations from foundations and individuals. Now you have an upcoming event. Uh, let's uh, put that out there and we'll mention this a couple times throughout the uh, interview here. An evening in Haiti uh, being held uh, August 8th, 6 p.m. in Palm Harbor. Talk to me a little bit about that event. Well, this will be our fifth dinner, actually the fourth one in Pinellas County. And uh, in the past, we've had it at a very lovely home in Clearwater, but we outgrew it last year. We were kind of almost standing room only. So... Uh, I was at a party in May at this place, Earthscapes Garden Center, and I met the owner, and I'm like, whoa, we're looking for a new venue. And I told him a little bit about what we're doing, and he said, well, I would donate this to you for that. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> and he said, no, you know, you should be supported. You're doing a good thing. So it's this amazing place. It's Earthscapes Garden Center and um, Garden Room. It's a landscaping company, and this man decided instead of making a portfolio of photographs of the work he's done for his prospective clients, he would just create it on the land next to his office. So it's got like paved walkways, waterfalls, an outdoor barbecue, an outdoor um, tiki huts. You know, it's really beautiful. And all the money gets straight to Haiti, you know, minus we have almost no expenses this year because a lot of Restaurants are donating food to help us. We also going to cook some Haitian stuff. Okay, ourselves. so money that comes into your organization uh, again, the future of Haiti organization. I assume then the majority of it then is going to actually help the people. I mean, you hear about these other organizations like the Red Cross, and they have so much overhead, and a lot of what you give them goes to really just supporting the uh, the foundation itself and the infrastructure of it. Tell me a little bit about this. How much of the funds that people donate to the uh, future of Haiti organization make it to the people? Over eighty percent. We, we don't take any money ourselves personally. As a matter of fact, it's the opposite sometimes. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and uh, we just send money. I mean, we have almost no expenses. You know, we're, we're looking for an office space to be donated to us right now. We're looking for a warehouse because we have another project. After the banquet on Saturday, our next project is a 40-foot container for Christmas. Wow. And so we're going to be taking a lot of donations. You know, we'll need about $11,000 cash to actually get the container sent and out of customs. But we're also going to be taking a lot of clothing and toys and food that we're going to send over as well. So you're doing this uh, out of the kindness of both of your all's hearts here. I mean, you're not taking any salary. You're doing this just because you like to help and support the the people affected, you know, by this uh, devastating earthquake. So, I mean, I commend you uh, for that. I mean, I love to hear stories of uh, like that. that inspires me, you know, to do what I do and then to help others and hopefully other listeners out there. You know, that's what this show is about, learning about what people are doing and, and hopefully inspiring others to do the same. Uh, tell me about the uh, support from the uh, community and uh, you can always put out there, you know, that you're looking for more support. But how has the support been from uh, the community and this organization? Well, you know, it's it's kind of hard in Pinellas County because there aren't many people that know about Haiti and really understand what we're doing. So, of course, doing, you know, getting help from you to get more exposure helps us. A lot of the support has come from actually in, even internationally. You know, um, the calendar I gave you, uh, the May photo has got mm -hmm. three women with three children. And those women came from England to meet the children that they're sponsoring. You know, and so we have people from all over the place. And uh, what about the local community? I mean, we have we have a few sponsors right now. We've got a plumbing company. Our car plumbing is sponsoring us for this event. Um, Duncanson Electric. 
a mortgage company, and I'm going blank on the name. I'm so no, it's sorry, fine. Steve no, it's Hayes, fine. But, so, but you know. you're all the big thing is, I mean, you definitely need to support, uh, you know, to make this work. And I mean, you've made it work now for what now five years or so, right? You yes. started this in September of 2011, and uh, so it's just you know, you know, an inspirational story to see what you've taken us uh, through so far. Uh, I'm at the website futurehaiti.org. This is where people can uh, find some more information about the uh, organization again, futurehaiti.org. And I see you've got some Haiti relief projects on the site and with some goals in mind a bakery uh, orphanage uh, school talk to me about uh, some of these projects well one of the things that we really want to do that we've wanted to do from the beginning is to be self-sustainable and so we're working on uh, a possible grant right now to set up a bakery down there which would be able to fund our projects because it's quite painful relying 100 percent on donations mm-hmm. you know um the school you know reggie's an educator and after teaching college for 23 years, he knows, and we all know pretty much, that education is your key out. And the children down there are so desperate for their education. We want to build a school, which is going to probably be half a million dollar project. But we've bought half an acre of land for that. And uh, I mean, we had to, I've been down there eight times. And so this is what keeps me going is these children. They're so amazing. You know, they're so full of love, so intelligent, and they have zero materially. Yeah. You know, a lot of them, most of our kids are sleeping on the floor. You know, they hardly have any clothes. They don't have electronics. They don't have toys. But they make little palm, you know, they take palm fronds and they'll weave kites that fly. And uh, just one story I wanted to tell you, like the last time I was there, our school has 423 kids, the kids from the orphanage, plus about 300 kids coming from the outside below poverty level that were not in school before us. I mean, we have a 14-year-old that came to us, had never been in school before, Mm -hmm. you know. And... uh, Reggie saw this little boy on the staircase on a Monday morning, and he said to him, why aren't you in class? And the little boy said, my stomach hurts. And he said, did you eat anything today? And he said, no. And he asked him, when was the last time you ate? And he said, on Saturday. Wow. You know. And he brought him upstairs, and we had some leftover porridge. So we gave him that. And I, I said to him in Creole, I said, Kamuele, you know, what's your name? And he said to me in English, my name is blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you speak English? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oui, intelligent? Yes. And it just broke me up. You know, I'm like, God, what are we doing? Like, how many other kids are coming to school hungry, Mm -hmm. you know, so desperate because they have nothing. And if they can only get their education, maybe they can be somebody, you know. And um, it helps put in perspective what you and I and everybody, uh, you know, across, you know, the United States has. And then down in Haiti, you have these people that have been you know, devastated by an earthquake that happened five years ago, uh, among other things. I mean, the country has already, you know, had a little uh, suffering from, you know, weak infrastructure. And uh, so it's just, you know, great to, you know, have, you know, people such as yourselves and Reggie here that have taken the time and effort, you know, to help others. And so, again, I commend you for that. Uh, who else can help the organization other than just, you know, through donations? How else can people how else can people get involved in this? Well, we'd love some volunteers. You know, we, we are packing up these barrels. We need volunteers to help sell raffle tickets, for example. Like, I didn't mention we have a raffle. You know, we have some cool prizes. We have a couple of tickets to Ruth Eckerd Hall to see uh, Aussie Pink Floyd. We've got a $100 gift certificate to NakedWines.com. We have three hours at Sim Center Tampa Bay. I don't know if you guys know about that, but that's like our grand prize. That's a place where you can simulate flying uh, a 737 jet in a real cockpit mm-hmm. or they have this space thing, this outer space thing where you actually travel. They, they demoed it on me, right? You put this thing over your head and he's like, there's Jupiter, there's Saturn, there's mm-hmm. the moon. Now you're looking back at North America. And then he says, look around. And he says, look around all the way. And it's 360 degree simulation. So they donated three hours of that for our raffle, which is uh, $320 value. Well, some great information. And again, thanks to those people for helping out the organization as well. Got to take a quick break, but I'm currently talking with uh, Leslie Hobbs, Vice President of the Future of Haiti Organization, also co-founder uh, uh, Claude Reginald Jean in studio today. And you can learn more about them and the organization and how to get involved at futurehaiti.org. You're currently listening to that business show, Jamie Maloney, or business become show business. Are you looking for a local real estate firm that knows the market and has your interests in mind? Then contact Jim McPeak at McPeak Real Estate Firm, a family-owned business whose agents have over 60-plus years of experience in the Tampa Bay market. Many of the agents are military veterans that know the VA process for buying a home and are proud to help our military members in any way they can. From residential to commercial real estate, McPeak Real Estate Firm is here to help. Contact Jim at 813-495-3875 and learn more at mcpeakteam.com. Have you considered a reverse mortgage as part of your retirement financial plan? 
For homeowners age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage from Access Reverse Mortgage is a safe economical way to turn your home's equity into cash or monthly income. Access Reverse Mortgage is a family-owned company based right here in the Tampa Bay area for the past 10 years. They are A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and Florida's leading reverse mortgage provider. Call 727-347-0305 or go to accessreverse.com to start your research today. NMLS number 4566. That's 727 347 Zero three zero five. Hey there, it's Lynn Wise, the founder of Wise Business Advisors and Contractor Business Alliance. I am a certified value builder advisor, and I help business owners build a company that will allow them to have the business that they dreamed of when they started. Why did you go into business for yourself? I'm sure it was not to work 100 hours a week with no work-life balance and no financial freedom. What am I talking about? I'm talking about building a business that provides value to you and your family now and in the future. You can learn about the eight essential areas of a business that you must build to have a business that can be an asset for your future. Go to wisebusinessadvisors.com and take the Value Builder score. It is free and will deliver your score immediately on how you are doing on building a valuable business for you and your family. Or call me at 772-834-8513 to learn more about the Value Builder system. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their Shop at Home Flooring Sales Service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made well-born cabinets and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage want you to experience the thrill of one-day underwriting and the comfort in knowing your loans will be clear to close in record time. While a competition looks to a lost closing date, Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage focus on their 12-day clear to close. They do this by utilizing their world-class operations staff to underwrite your loan within six hours, process your loan in 12 days, and have your loan closed in time. Underwritten in six hours, cleared to close in 12 days. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. Still have slow traffic on State Road 54 near Seven Springs in Pasco County. Also, Starkey Boulevard just north of 54 closed down due to a crash. Crash in Pinellas County along southbound 66th Street just before 126th, the right lane block there. Over in Brandon, Dr. King, west of Falkenberg, there was a crash. And also on State Road 60, just before 75, the right lane block there. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson and Eudora Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line, 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Help your child discover the magic of nature and create memories that will last a lifetime. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest or park near you and discover other cool things to do when you go, like fishing, biking, or even camping. Visit discovertheforest.org. Flood watch still in effect for the coastal counties. A 30% rain chance today, mostly cloudy, high 88. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 77. Tomorrow, sunshine, high 91. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back, and thanks for staying tuned in. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Again, weekday mornings, 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ, and learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com. I currently talk with uh, Leslie Hobbs, Vice President of Future of Haiti Organization. Learn more about them at futurehaiti.org, and also joined in studio by Claude. Reginald Jean. Leslie, tell me more about uh, Claude uh, or Reggie, I should say. I keep going to call him by that first name there, but I understand in uh, Haiti or in the French uh, uh, speaking countries that the more emphasis is put on the middle name as uh, Haiti is a French speaking country. But tell me more about Reggie. Well, 
uh, as I mentioned, he was a college teacher for 23 years. He's also an engineer. He was a telecommunications engineer for 27 years. And the last 15, he was in upper management. So he knows a lot of people. He actually installed, like, the telecommunication system in the presidential palace, you know, before the earthquake, of course. And uh, so everybody knows Reggie. And he's told me some stories about people that he's helped. And, you know, at first they were just stories. But then I started meeting the people. You know, one little girl... Uh, not TV Dodd, I think her name was. Mm -hmm. She was walking down the street one day during school hours in her school uniform, and he was driving his pickup truck, and he saw her, and he's like, hey, aren't you supposed to be in school? And she said, yes, but I was kicked out because my parents couldn't pay. And he said, would you be willing to go back to the school with me and verify that that's true? And she said, yes. So she, they went back to the school. It was true. He paid for the rest of her month there. And then he met with her parents to make sure, you know, let them know that there were no ulterior motives, mm -hmm. and he paid for her schooling through high school. And now she's a business owner in Fort Lauderdale, and she told me she owes her life to Reggie. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people like this. you know. So he and his brother actually followed in their father's footsteps. His father was a humanitarian and was a landowner, and he would let people use his land and keep like 80% of the crop, and he would take 20% and sell it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and enable people to have their own small businesses. He actually lent people money, and uh, Reggie told me when he died, right before he died, he had a whole logbook of everybody that owed him money, and he called them in one by one and told them they didn't owe him any more money. Wow. You know, That's right. Just relieved everybody of their debts before he died. Well, we need more people like Reggie. And I, <laughs> Reggie, we had uh, Leslie said she had to tell us about more about you because she said you're just so modest. It's hard to get anything <laughs> out of you. You know, you don't, you don't want to really talk about yourself so much. Is that true? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I understood now I was supposed to document all the activities that I was doing in Haiti. I uh, planted over 100,000 trees in mm -hmm. Haiti. But I have no pictures, and uh, I didn't understand it could be important to have to talk about yourself. Mm -hmm. I was just into the doing, doing what is right. That was my main motivation. So when uh, we start helping people, it was because it was necessary. Because uh, sometimes when you see somebody uh, like not making it financially uh, in misery. Uh, first thing we have been uh, uh, trained to think it's that they are dumb, mm -hmm. you know, because they didn't make it. But uh, the image I have uh, to explain what I'm trying to say here, it's like when you are in a combination going under the ocean. It's a heavy metal combination limiting your actions. But when they look into the glass window, they see... The, the being, mm -hmm. very active and alive inside of it. Right. So that's exactly what I see in the eyes of children in Haiti. Brilliant, and, uh, but stuck into a combination where they cannot uh, expand themselves and become what they are able to become. So I was, uh, I, I decided, I felt immediately that we had something to do. Once you see that, you have to open that combination, open the, the avenues and uh, the opportunities for this. Wow. Children. Very inspirational. And uh, we need, uh, Reggie, we need more people like you out there who don't want to talk about themselves uh, and uh, and want to help others. So very inspirational. I uh, commend you and thank you uh, for that thank and what you you're doing for your uh, country down in Haiti. Uh, Leslie, we got about a minute left. So again, let's uh, rehash. Uh, you got this event coming up uh, the, an evening in Haiti. Let's go through that one more time for the people who are just tuning in. Well, we're going to have a wonderful dinner. Uh, Haitian food and other food as well this year at uh, Earthscape's Garden Room in Palm Harbor. And you have the address in front of you. I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me, Jamie. Uh, yep. It's at 6 p.m. We're mm -hmm. going to have spicy food and we're going to have regular food as well. We're going to have Haitian music and a beautiful atmosphere and a little briefing on what we're doing with photos. And we're also going to have a silent auction and our raffle drawing. Yeah, it's, again, August 8th at 6 p.m. at the Earthscapes Garden Room, and that's at 816 Alternate US uh, 19 North in Palm Harbor. And you can learn more about them and ways to get involved at futurehaiti.org. Leslie and Reggie, I commend you both for what you're doing, and thank you very much uh, for being in the studio today and talking to me about your organization. Thank you Thank very you much for Jamie. having us. Absolutely. And again, that was Leslie Hobbs and Claude Reginald Jean, founders of the Future of Haiti organization, a great nonprofit helping out the uh, people affected by the earthquake and uh, in Haiti. And so learn more about them futurehaiti.org. Well, be sure to tune in tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. It'll be Working Women Wednesdays. And again, you've been listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business.